First, let me give you more of a scientific definition of a pojo. It's the way of breathing that dynamically balances the air compression in lungs. A pojo has more than one vectors of pressure and allows to reach full range of a particular voice without so-called uh, placement manipulations. For those who truly implement a pojo technique, voice sounds as one. So, for example, we don't hear passaggio and we don't hear chest register. So the voice sounds as consistent as it can be. There are some so-called hybrid methods that use combination of apojo, as they claim, and a placement. And, but I repeat that the true apojo way, or method if you like to call it that way, is always or 99.9% .9 based on dynamic support. The question is what is dynamic support and why do we need it? Dynamic support or a pojo is first of all is use of multi-directional forces that compress air in lungs. Uh, well, we use low abdominal muscles as a driving force for this particular compression and we use diaphragm to balance this force. And why with the diaphragm? First of all, the movement of the diaphragm as a muscle is total opposite to the movement of the low abdominal muscles. Diaphragm in this case is working not as a supporter and diaphragm cannot support the voice as uh, the opposite that many schools claim and uh, say it losingly support with the diaphragm. On the other hand we hear uh, as almost a cliche uh, from many many schools and many many teachers the phrase, now you have to support with the diaphragm. We have to understand that by saying that support with the diaphragm, they, I mean those who really know uh, practically how to sing, they really don't mean support with the diaphragm, they mean balance with the diaphragm. And that will be more correct, more precise uh, description of how diaphragm functions. If you take anatomy class, you realize how muscles work in general. Every muscle in the body, and there is no exception, when it contracts, it contracts in only one way. For example, when we move our hand in the desired direction and our hand is very flexible, that raises a question, but how can I move my hand in such uh, sophisticated ways? My hand is moved in such sophisticated ways because I have multiple, I repeat, multiple muscles attached to my hand. And the vectors of those forces uh, can move it in a, any desired direction. When diaphragm contracts, it straightens up, creating a vacuum that sucks air into our lungs. And that's, after that, its function is almost over. Because exhalation is simply relaxing. And this explains the old cliché that is used by old masters and uh, some teachers today, uh, suggesting that as you sing, you feel like you were inhaling or drinking the sound. Of course, you cannot literally drink the sound. This is just a the way to prevent diaphragm from collapsing. In order to prevent the diaphragm from collapsing, you have to learn to use it as if you were inhaling. And in this case, the diaphragm plays the role of the balancer. Let me first explain placement as I understand it. For the sake of consistency, or, if you like, to translate it, for the sake of the beauty of the voice, its full range, we need so-called stable acoustic ambience. For this ambience, we have to create unchanged position of the larynx. Of course, it's a little bit relatively unchanged. It moves a little bit, especially moves inside and outwards. 
but it should not move neither down or up because if it moves either up or down it will change the consistency of the voice because it will change the ambience inside our throat this is very obvious scientific vocal acoustic fact to my surprise many don't even know about these facts and therefore based on this uh, false theory they think that uh, the voice of the larynx can move naturally up and down as if there was nothing wrong with it I have to say that understanding of the voice uh, is very conservative. You know, if you look at the Lily Lemon's theory of placement uh, that was introduced in her book in the uh, beginning of the 20th century, that theory became so vastly popular. The theory I am opposed to right now, it, it became very popular. Over time, it was looked carefully and it was recognized as pseudo theory. Nevertheless, look at at the methods that are used today probably 85 or 90 percent of the methods that we see the vocal methods are based on placement and the question is what makes this pseudo truly pseudo theory so vastly popular because uh, i guess it manufactures and makes things happening fast like okay imagine you're a tenor without high notes and uh, you're looking for a teacher who can place high notes uh, well, tenors are obsessed about high notes well, you're not a good tenor if you don't have at least B flat at the beginning and of course with a short period of time you have to master your high C's it's a fast fix that leads to a dangerous and I would say rather ugly future as uh, one of my colleagues said once Well, I have to explain one thing. You see, uh, if we look at the voices or the richness of the voices, and I am a tenor myself, so uh, uh, it won't be, uh, uh, I won't be saying that the tenor is the richest voice of, of all voices because it's not true. The richest voice by the tones and uh, overtones uh, are uh, usually low voices, so the bass would be the richest voice, uh, and after it would be a baritone and uh, up to the chain a tenor mezzo-soprano, dramatic soprano, a lyric soprano, and then coloratura soprano. The higher you go, the less overtones your voice has. And it has nothing to do with uh, saying, oh, then, you know, the, the bass is the most beautiful voice or uh, op opposite to the coloratura soprano. That is a... No, it it's absolutely has nothing to do with that. Uh, the, if you if you like the certain voice, you like it for different reasons than just uh, being rich or not rich. Some people like flute, uh, which is a fine, amazing instrument that has very little harmonics, uh, as opposite to the organ, for example, or um, other instruments. Nevertheless, there are people that exclusively like flute, and so they make the parallel with the flute. The high voice, uh, if you if I can explain to you, has less problems with inconsistency than the lower voice. A simple example, so if let's say larynx of the bass baritone, even a tenor, moves along his register, we obviously hear a difference in the color and inconsistencies in the voice as passaggio. You see, coloratura voices don't even have the sensation of passaggio at all because their voice is based on higher frequencies and they actually can relatively get away uh, using uh, unstable larynx without damaging the consistency in their voices. Of course, you probably mean some exercises. Uh, yes, uh, but there is a controversy about it. We're going to talk about it and we, I'm going to explain this controversy in the next programs. Thank you.